Let your own life testify to the Savior's keeping power. Let your character reveal the high standard to which all may attain. Teach the gospel in simple object lessons. Let everything with which you have to do be a lesson in character building. In the humble round of toil, the very weakest, the most obscure, may be workers together with God and may have the comfort of his presence and sustaining grace. They are not to weary themselves with busy anxieties and needless cares. Let them work on from day to day, accomplishing faithfully the task that God's providence assigns, and he will care for them. He says, In nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6, American Revised Version, and 4, 7. The Lord's care is over all his creatures. He loves them all and makes no difference, except that he has the most tender pity for those who are called to bear life's heaviest burdens. God's children must meet trials and difficulties, but they should accept their lot with a cheerful spirit, remembering that for all that the world neglects to bestow, God himself will make up to them in the best of favors. It is when we come into difficult places that he reveals his power and wisdom in answer to humble prayer. Have confidence in him as a prayer hearing, prayer answering God. He will reveal himself to you as one who can help in every emergency. He who created man, who gave him his wonderful physical, mental, and spiritual faculties, will not withhold that which is necessary to sustain the life he has given. He who has given us his word, the leaves of the tree of life, will not withhold from us a knowledge of how to provide food for his needy children. How can wisdom be obtained by him who holds the plow and drives the oxen? By seeking her as silver... Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Brother Ruben. I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, we'd like to welcome you, each one of us uh, on the platform. Uh, God has managed to bring us together back on this platform again to learn together in the book with the Ministry of, of Healing. And uh, today, today I believe is chapter 12. Uh, and before we, we go into the lesson, maybe I'll, I'll ask... Um, Anyone to give us a song? A song before we pray and give chance to the preacher of the day, the one who's taking us through chapter 12. Anyone to sing for us or to sing in, uh, in opening? Anyone? John? Come on, you know, I don't know how to sing, man. <laughs> no one? No volunteer? All right, let me sing for you this song. Uh, it's, it's in a... It's in a a hymn called Hymns of Praise. It's number 129. And it goes like this. Lord, we come before thee now. At thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our soul disdain. 
Shall we seek the Lord in vain? Shall we seek the Lord in vain? Lord, on the assault's defend, in compassion now descend. Fill our hearts with a rich grace, to now lips to sing thy praise, to now lips to sing thy praise. In thine own appointed way, now we seek thee, here we stay. Lord, we know not how to go, till a blessing thou bestow, till a blessing thou bestow. Grant that, O mercy, can find the egg God supremely kind. Heal the sick, the captive free. Let us all rejoice in thee. Let us all rejoice in thee. Brother John, you pray for us in opening for the preacher. We are praying. Our Heavenly Father, we give glory and honor unto thee for the wonderful protection throughout the day. Heavenly Father, we are chief sinner before thee, who have sins against thee in many ways, in thinking, in talking, and in our deeds. Heavenly Father, please, Jehovah, wash us, Lord, in the blood of Jesus, and cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, this house we come before you, listening unto you, the presenter whom you have chosen, O Lord, please, Jehovah, be with you. Him, O Lord, and speak through him, O Lord, and give him, O Lord, the mind. But Heavenly Father, I pray, Jehovah, that Lord, as we listen, O Lord, please, Jehovah, let your spirit of truth, O Lord, open our mind so that we're able to get the message, O Lord. And Heavenly Father, let this message, O Lord, be so that we're able to put it on practice on our life, Jehovah. So may people, when they look at us, they may see Christ in through us, Jehovah. Holy Father, what else can we ask for? We present, O Lord, everything unto your hand. Let that will be done in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Brother John. Uh, would like to welcome those who joined us. Uh, yes. Uh, without wasting time, uh, let us enjoy together. I'll give this time to our brother to take us through chapter 12. My brother, this is your time. Uh, can you hear me? When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and can everyone hear me? Someone maybe to unmute themselves and say, Yes, okay. Can you hear you, but just close your screen. You don't see the screen, okay? Uh, no, it's gone. Yeah. Let me try again. Oh boy, can you see it now? Not yet. No. You can't see anything. Now we can. Yeah. Okay. These things of sharing computers also. Okay. That's good. Uh, good evening to all. Hope you had a wonderful day. Uh, welcome to today's sharing. The topic is entitled 
help for the unemployed and the homeless. Now, it is found in the book called The Ministry of Healing, and we are looking at chapter 12. Now, the chapter starts off with a topic, now help for the unemployed and the homeless. I mean, it begins off with a question, and the question is, now it's a question which is asked by so many people who are good-hearted and who are kind-hearted. They ask a question and they are anxious and they consider the poor and they wonder, what means can be found for their relief? For the poor, what can be done to solve the problem of poverty and pauperism and, and in, an increasing crime in the world today? So the book we are reading will tell us that the solution to this is if men would give more heed to the teaching of God's word, they would find the solution to these problems that perplex them. So all these questions which many look at, which many consider, if only would give heed to the teachings of the word of God, we'll find solutions to such questions and problems that perplex us. Yes. And then we are directed to look at the Old Testament. Let us regard the Old Testament to see what God had, had, had done to the children of Israel. We look at them and then we learn what, how God dealt with such issues in our time. Now we see that God had a plan for Israel. The subtopic is entitled God's plan for Israel. Now in this, you would find that when the children of Israel had settled in Canaan, God had provided land for every family. You'd find that every family had a home and they had land, which, were, which, they had, which was sufficient for them to till the ground and for them to be able to sustain themselves. So God's plan for Israel was that every family had a home and the land. Now that's why it says that the tribe, the tribe with, there were 12 tribes. You'd find that every tribe once they had settled in Canaan, every tribe was given a portion of the land at which they had settled so that they would be able to provide for themselves. We see that to, in today's time, we have so many issues regarding poverty due to the reason that the world has departed to what God had done to the example that God provides in the word. And another thing we learn in the Old, in the Old Testament is that when God had provided land, when, it, when someone had land in Israel and it was found out that you were poor, I mean, you needed help. And then you had someone, you had sold the, your land to someone. God had provided that the land shall, he had said that the, loans, the land shall not be sold. But even if it was sold, it was possible for the individual to, you know, to redeem the land when the individual was now able to sustain themselves. If it so happened that the individual could not sustain themselves, or could not be able to redeem the land, the next of kin could do it for them and then give the land back to the individual who had rented, who had, who had sold his land. Another one was, in case that was not possible, there was what was called the year of Jubilee, in which all that was sold was returned to, the, to their rightful owners, you know, in the year of Jubilee. So this was the system that God had put in place. If as a world we are to consider it, we are to look at this, it will, it will help in how we deal with the unemployed and the issue of poverty and pauperism today. Yes. And another part, another teaching was the industrial training. You'd find that in Israel, it, in, in Israel, it was every, fa every father's duty to teach his son, you know, his sons, their children, useful trade that they could use as they grow up so that they would not be dependent on others, they would be able to work for themselves. You know, the greatest men in Israel were trained to do industrial pursuit. Various industries were taught, as the book puts it, in the schools of the prophets, and many of the students sustained themselves by manual labor. Instead of what's happening today, we just want to sit home and be able to somehow make a living. But if God teaches us that, that is not possible. No, we need to consider the poor. 
even as even if god had designed this this system god had done that you know he did he did not still do away with the poor the book puts it in this way that these arrangements did not however wholly do away with poverty it was not god's purpose that poverty should wholly cease it is it is one of his means for the development of character so actually the poor will always you know they won't cease to exist but god says in his word that the poor he says shall never cease out of the land therefore i command thee saying thou shalt open thy hand wide unto thy brother for thy for thy poor and to thy needy in thy land so we should consider the poor because they will always exist and if you do find a brother who is in need god requires us to open our hand to consider the needy and to provide for the needy and they also exist as a way to develop character you know none need to be there's this other point i found which is that it says that people sometimes people are afraid to give to the needy someone comes and is always coming and they're always you no know, asking some people are afraid i think maybe i was also one of those they're afraid to give to the need they're saying if i give i myself will end up not having in the end so god says that none need to fear that their liberate would bring them to want instead you know the bible says that obedience to god's commandment would surely result in prosperity business principles you know he who take advantage we all know that if our business is based on an unfair principle on, on taking advantage of someone then hey, such businesses are not pleasing to god he says that he who take advantage of another's misfortunes in order to benefit himself or who seeks to profit himself through another's weaknesses or incompetence is a transgressor both of the principles and of the precept of the word of god the desire to get a living without work opens the door to wretchedness and vice and crime almost without limit that's what i picked on that sub topic and then the one which followed was the city slums and then i wondered what does the word slums mean then we found out that in cities you have better you have houses for the rich you have houses for the medium and then later on you would find that you have houses like places like katutura you have houses where it is not conducive for people to live but unfortunately such places exist and they are called slums they are called the city slums and you'd find that there are children who grow up in such places surrounded by just an unhealthy environment as a result they end up growing and become criminals and yeah the book there's this point which the book it says that the multitudes are trained to become criminals falls to society that has abandoned them to misery and degradation so it is because they are not considered as a result they end up turning against the society that has abandoned them and the great cities are mult a multitude who receive less care and consideration than are given to dumb animals this point hurt me when i read it you'd find that other people we we don't consider others we even consider our dogs our animals our pets our cats even better than these individuals you know as a result they end up becoming criminals they end up you know becoming criminals because the society has abandoned them men who are upright and are well meaning become poor through lack of industrial training many became poor because they were not trained grow when they were growing up they don't have these skills so it is up to us to be able to come in and then to teach them to be able to find food you know christ says you must teach what teach an individual to to fish not just feeding the person you are not helping it is god's purpose that the rich and the poor shall be closely bound together by the ties of sympathy and helpfulness if god has made you to be in the state of the rich 
God intends that you are closely bound, that we are closely bound to the poor through sympathy and helpfulness. In the ministry to the poor, there's a wide field of service for both women and men. There's a lot that we can do. We, women can teach the needy how to sew, how to, to cook, and all that. Men can also teach other skills that they can use for survival. Missionary families, this is what we just said previously. Our missionary families are needed to settle in the worst places. Let farmers, let farmers, financiers, builders, and those who are skilled in various arts and crafts to go to neglected fields, to improve the land, to establish industries, to prepare humble homes for themselves, and to help their neighbors. So if we are to follow this, we'll be able to help, we'll be able to have opportunities to help our neighbors. Our own homes and surroundings should be object lessons. People should be able to look and learn lessons, teachings, ways of improvement, so that industries, cleanliness, taste, and refinement may take the place of idleness, uncleanness, coarseness, and disorder. By our lives, an example, we can help others to discern that which is repulsive in their character, in their surrounding hope and courage. We are to encourage. We can do nothing without courage and perseverance. Let us speak words of hope and courage to the poor and the disheartened. Let's just not speak words. Let them see it in action also. Christian workers are to meet the people where they are and educate them, not in pride, but in character building. Teach them how Christ walked and denied himself Help them to learn from him the lessons of self-denial and sacrifice. Teach them. We are to teach them to be aware of self-indulgence in conforming to fashion. Life is too valuable to, is too valuable, too full of solemn, sacred responsibilities to be wasted in pleasing self. So we are to direct these who are in need. We are to direct individuals those at our doorstep, even our neighbors, those found in our surrounding to Christ. Speak words of hope, speak words of encouragement. Let them through sing us. Let us be example, you know, let them see you and be able to learn object lessons. Life's best thing. Life's best things are, these are the, this, and what I found is life's best thing. The, Bible, the book says that life's best things, which are simplicity, honest, truthfulness, purity, integrity, cannot be bought or sold. We need to look heavenward in faith. We are not to be discouraged because, because of apparent failure, nor should we be disheartened by delay. We should work cheerfully, hopefully, gratefully, believing that the earth holds in her bosom rich treasures for the faithful workers, worker to Ghana, stores richer than gold or silver. The mountains and hills are changing. The earth is waxing old like a garment, but the blessings of God, which spread for his people a table in the wilderness will never cease. So there is good. So all these simplicity, honest, truthfulness, purity, integrity, those are life's best things. And individuals can learn such things from you and I. Oh, okay. Yes, I think, yeah, that was my summary for today. Yeah, we'll stop. Yeah. God bless the sharing of his word. Thank you. Um, th thank you so much, uh, Brother Zedley. And uh, the lines are open for comments or questions. Anyone who has comments or questions, the lines are open. You are free to talk. 
All right, I, I have a question. Though, for those who have seen the chat, I have posted it. Now, let me just voice it here so that everyone can hear it. And then maybe someone can answer. Okay, you, you see the life at the village is being considered as the cheapest life that you can live. And then we have those people who leave the villages for unknown reason, just to come in town where life is expensive. And then in town they are suffering. Should we consider those as poor or which category? Because if you compare their life when they were at the village, it was better than now when they are in town. So are they poor or which category should we put them? Thank you. All right, I, I hope the All right, go on. Yeah, I'll try and answer Brother Richie's question. So, okay, the question is, is it's it's very hard for us to tell that, okay. It's very hard for us to like, just look at a person and then, yeah, we know they came from the village, but we don't really know what, what um, the reason was that they came here in town. And yeah, we, we both understand that life in the villages are cheaper than in towns. And yeah, a question will pop up and ask that, why did they leave the villages? A lot of reasons are there as to why people leave villages to come here. Some people from here, from here in towns, let's say they are criminals and they have people at home in the villages. Now, these people, when they go home, maybe during December, they, they go and pretend that they, they, have, they have a job here in Benduk and then they work and whatsoever and then and then those youngsters at home thinking that thinking that the, the, these, these people are, are living a very a very healthy and very expensive and very what very good life man that they have dreamt of and then they are attracted by these people okay maybe it's an uncle and then this this young boy or yeah or girl does not know how how venduks look looks like and then they like ask their uncle to come along with them now when they come here the first day they are fine in the in the uncle's house they do not know the uncle's whereabouts they do not know how they, they make their money and then the second day the uncle takes the their child out and then they see a person coming from a shop and then the uncle gives that 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 child a knife and tells him that okay now this is the life i live here in benduk you go stab that person and snatch those plastic bags or you do not eat today that will make that child to end up in the streets and because they do not want to do such an act and then they they end up like in the streets because they, they still do not have the means to go back to the villages. Sometimes it's not by choice that they, yeah, it, it, it is by choice that they come here, that they come here thinking that the life here is, is what they have been dreaming of. They do not know how expensive the life here is. And then they, they get stuck in the end of the day. They do not have it. They do not have the means to go back home. And then they keep sinking lower and lower and lower. So I think that is some of um, the reasons why we have people here that, that, that if they were in the villages, they would live a happy and nice life. But just because they are stuck, they can't go back here. They, they, they still have to live here. And Yes. So I, I just gave a situation or a scenario as to why some people are stuck here and left the villages, which are cheaper. Sometimes not by choice. 
entirely. That's it for me. Thank you. Any yes? I think I felt my first question was to say how do you define someone is poor or not? I think that's the must be question we must think over it as we are going. For well, some time you, you might meet someone and you might think is this person really poor or does he only need the skills to make him a better person? Now I, before I comment on that question, I like the topic where it says help men to help themselves, you know. Most of I think not it's not like uh, in us negros or as uh, of the darker color to have this mentality of saying that if he, my brother made it in life, I have to follow him after him. Or if he, if they just want to say that if they have nothing, I think they are cursed or, or, or something in life, you know. Most people like depending on people. They come and ask to do sugar, tomorrow they come again and they come again. So you become a, or a center of giving food. Now, Sister White says something and he says that. That is on help men to help themselves. When says we may give to the poor and harm them by teaching them to be dependent, you know. Mo so most of these people that we must give, sometimes we must really think that we can give them to hundred dollar. Tomorrow they come back. We give them again hundred dollar. That does only make makes him to be dependent upon, but also makes people to, to have a hold. It's better to as he says, better to teach the person how to fish, you know. Because they every day come to your house and seek for refuge. So even those who come from the village, most of them have no skills. Yet they, I think on this topic, was speaking about training the people to have skills. So I think much better is us to go to the village as Christians, you know, those who are close to the village. Give skills to these people how to, they have, they have big lands, most of them, I'm telling you, they are more richer than us who are in town. But they come and stay at the sharks here, hoping for a better life. Because they, 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 they don't have the skill, they come to town to come and be a security guard, come and clean for a white man but they have their own land left in the village deep down where they are next to the river, but they can't have the So us as Christians, us as a church, is us to take a mandate. Sister White says that one of the great missionary work is to help others not realize their skills. If you read through this book, the main theme. So it's better us to go to the villages, teach these people simple life, teach them how to toll the ground, teach them how to manage their finances when they sell their potatoes. Because the chapter where it says, is it family missionary? Where it says, let farmers finance the, the, the those who do finance builders and those who are skilled in various arts and crafts go to neglected fields. So it is our duty as teachers who are here, those who did finance, do, those who did IT, those who did anything, those who did craft work, to go to the village and give people skills so they can remain in the village and sort them their lives out. Because if us we neglect giving them skills in the villages, those who are close to them, it's very easy for them to come to the, to the city and, and, and look for jobs. So it is our duty as Christians. Is, I mean, that's a great missionary to use their hands. And I think they'll be better to stay in the village. Then that question to say, how do you see this person is poor or not? It will be very easy to answer and to consider but a rich question. I will come back later. Sorry, I, I just want to make up a, a follow-up question on, on Brother Kam's comment. Uh, so Kam's, do uh, you mean that someone who left the village, who is the village, has a land, where they can do some project and come to the city where they are just suffering. Those person, that person cannot be considered as someone who is poor, eh? or what, what are you trying to say? No, you can consider them as poor without skills, but it is our duty to go to them and teach them skills, you know? After we give them the skill, it, it, I think they not because to be poor anymore, because we give them the skills to, to work, because they were poor before without skills. Now that we give them skills, they're not considered to be poor anymore, because when you give them the, the skills to work, they become, they enrich themselves with knowledge and, the, and craft work, and they're able to do all the work. So before I, I getting knowledge, I think we, we, you might consider them as poor. But after that, giving them, they have learned, they only need skills. So these guys, they are not really poor, but they only need knowledge in order to in, enhance their life in future. I hope I made it clear. They're not really poor, as you say, they are poor, but they need the skills. Yes. The topic we were looking at was help for the unemployed and the homeless. Comes, brother comes and says most of the things, but now looking at how we are to help the homeless and the unemployed. Please, 
you are not clear, beloved? What well, I'm saying. Yeah, the topic we are looking at was help for the unemployed and the homeless. What we, need, what we are looking at is how you and I, we can help those who are homeless and those who are unemployed. For those who are homeless, we, I don't know, the government, maybe you and I, if you are in that position, if we are able to do so, we take them out to the country, we provide land, Maybe you and I also, we go and we live there with them. We teach them skills on how to use that land. You know, by so doing, you are actually doing God's service for that individual. And for the unemployed, teach them also. Just give them skills. Let's train them. Yes. Yeah, let him also add. Uh, one of the questions you asked that how can you tell the brother or sister is poor? Uh, when we look at the uh, biblical, um, what you know, if you remember about how John the, the Baptist was baptizing people, people came to him. Then he said, the people asked him, saying, "What shall we do then?" Then he answered and he said unto them, "He that has two coats, let him impart to him that has none, and he that has meat, let him also do likewise." Uh, you see, John here was trying to tell us that you know how we identify people who can able to give the things to, to people. A person who do not have, we know for sure that this person, for example, that uh, you see this person every time is having on one t-shirt and one what doesn't maybe choose only sandal and everything. Those are the people you need to identify already. This is what, because a person cannot every time repeat the same things, wear the same things. You can already identify this is poor. And one of the key points is that, uh, um, I forgot the verse itself, man, that way, but we said that when we go and give uh, help out there, that um, we should first start from the house itself, but we should not just go and give away to the, what, to the heath and face. We have to start from the household itself. One of the key points is that we, do, we lack of this, what I, I can I say, to, we lack to identify people within the church itself, people who are hungry. Uh, the Bible says that these people, they will, they, they will never cease. People will still, there will be people, the poor people there. Even in the church itself, there are poor people there. They do not have food to eat. But what do we do? We gather food in the church. We go out there and give to the, what, to the stranger people. We're leaving our own household people feeling hunger. This is what we do most of the time. Um, we have to identify. We have to ask for the spirit to identify. And um, the question, to, maybe to just try to also to answer is that, those people used to leave the village left to come in town. The fact is that it's us who people from town who used to go and spread uh, what story, uh, different stories saying that no, town life is very, what is very good. When you go there, you get your opportunity and everything. This is what we people from town go and tell people there. So those people come from, uh, from the villages to come look for better life. But when they come here, they don't find that better life which they had from people. So they struggle a lot. But for them to go back, because they have that mentality when they left, also they boosted, when I'm coming back, I'm going to become different. So they do not want to go the same way, just the way they came, they, they, they came again. So they struggle here. But the fact is that us now who have this mentality now, that if we teach them that no, do not what, uh, if we impart knowledge upon them that no, if you go back to the village and live that life, you will not be the same as it is. It's just that the, mental, the mentality itself, if we give them that mentality to go back, and stay there the same way, the way they can able to go back. The problem is just only the mentality, the mind to itself. Once you set something in the mind, you remain there. They will, people they will think that, you know, oh no, that uh, must remain here in town. That's the problem now. They are not really poor. But if they don't have anything, you consider a person is poor because the Bible is telling us that if they do not have something to eat or, or they are not working, the, the topic says unemployed and homeless. If they don't have those two things, they consider to also one they they fall in that category. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Any anybody else? Yeah, I still have a comment again. Right. So we're only talking about we're only talking about skills and knowledge here, but I know a lot of people that have skills 
they maybe they have gone to training centers but they do not have we they have business ideas but they do not have the capital to start off with their businesses so i think capital is also a hindrance to some kind of people that want to become successful as christians or yeah us we have to consider that that aspect also capital people need money to start up businesses not only skills so that's my comment all right thank you anyone else again can i comment yes see what people really like is not cap it can it might be capital but most of all is empowerment of the no of mine you know most of people might have skills but the the way most of us want to be employed by government you know we want to be employed by people we are just thinking to to know to be employed by someone looking currently we look in the in the in our current situation the economy is really going down maybe only government employees and teachers are safe to get jobs currently and nurses but those who, who are really they rely on private sector is very difficult so there's a way that's in the bible what do you have in your hands no i think most of us we need most of we have skills if you are if you went for welding it's much if you can start your own welding shop by welding for people if you did some if you did any craft work you can start with that but most of us want to be employed but most of us i think must start with business ideas also there are people i know that they since varsity they graduated they are four years now working employment but those people they've been using their own skills know what they have they, most of them that i know they are in the life of tutoring people you just go and knock someone's house you can tutor your, your kid someone will let you in and you tutor them so most of us we are just afraid of coming out of our comfort zones and wait to be employed by people but don't want to you know to expand on our own knowledge that we have and try to come up with our own business ideas so but if we wait to learn to employ us or someone to to give us a what is a job it might be too difficult we might stay at home and think we are unemployed but sometimes it takes just you get maybe a capital start selling fruits Someone said a great toxic that can't sell fruit. Who told you can't sell fruit? Brother man, go and sell if you can. At least you are, you are getting capital to do something in life. But that's why I want to sit at home until we are considered we are unemployed, we are poor. So that's the mentality of us sitting at home. You never say, uh, let me say a white man sitting at home is key to be considered a dropout sitting at home. Ah, those kids they do, they take skills and they start doing it. But I just want to sit at home, wait for government to employ us, wait someone to come and you know, give CVs after I've been rejected hundred times, sit at home and say, ah, we give up. But most of us, I think we must try to, to you know, start something in life, you know, business, small business, sell something, sell apples if you can. You're not immune for, for not selling apples. So I think that you must take the mentality of saying that I must be employed. If you have the skills, you have the employment, try to do something. Work. Go and knock out. You know, some of us, we sit at home waiting to be employed. Go and knock offices, sit, knock and say, I want a job. You might find a job, but that's one to sit at home. Just email our CVs. You might email on my gate, but if you go to the offices, give your CV in. I think that, that must be the scheme that must be taught to people. So those who are employed, give them skills maybe to maybe they can't talk. Maybe must they must be called to seminars, workshop. Church must organize workshop for people, you no, know, so that they can. How do they end their CVs? How do they communicate with the employers? And I think that scheme also must be de developed as Christian, where we 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 come with Sunday workshops to teach people how to maybe do their CVs, how. How do they write a cover letter to, for employment? Those things are the skills. Some may go to varsity, but there's no skill to, to draw up a, a cover page. There's no skill to do to type a one-page CV, you know, that looks professional when someone gives to a company. The HR might say, maybe I try to a person's CV. So those are the skills I think also we are lacking as Christian, you no? Know? Or we might have those skills, but we are lacking to give to others. We have the skills, we have the, let me say, the craftness in their, in them say, if the degree, if the honors, if the masters, but can put their things together and give, give it to a company. I think we must look also on those experts to teach people you know, those small skills where they can find employment by much easier. All right. Uh, thank you, Brother Kams. Just just to add also a bit uh, on what others has com have commented, uh, if you check back in the villages, you, you, you'll find out that the, 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 they are they are no poor or very rare. There are few people who are poor in the villages. Why? Because in the villages, they, 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 they till the ground and they produce food to eat throughout the whole year. And they, 
they really uh, work with their hands. And if you find someone with no food, maybe that might be a result of maybe they did not uh, produce enough and maybe the food finished uh, before the next season, rainy season. And if that case arises, in the villages, people help each other. They, they give each other uh, whatever millets or mahangu millets to, to pound. And that's the mentality we should have also. But in the, in the, in the cities and towns, it's, it's very difficult um, to get by. So that's why we find uh, poor people and the street kids in the in the streets so yeah uh, let it. me come in yeah i think uh one side that will kind of like uh, i will i can say what brother Kam said is uh, uh one side i will not agree with him because uh what i will say is that um you see when you look when you uh when you look at the life itself about town and village there's a difference when you study the, the people in the in the village itself that people in the village, for example, if they have the skills to make, maybe let him say to make to, to make a canoe, even though he doesn't have a ex, people from the village itself, they will hand over a cake, the ex to that person, so that person will be able to go and do a, a canoe. But what do people in town does? The fact is that us in town, when I have a skills to, to start a set, a set, maybe I'm having a set of skills which you can do, maybe to start a business in other format. The fact is that people in town, they are too much what, um, self-centered. They cannot be able to give a hand to someone to start a business. Because you, you can be able to lay down all the plans and everything that everything, when you look at that, this person is, is true indeed, have a, what, a, a, a mentality to go further. But the fact is that a starter is a problem. Money, especially nowadays in town, a life without a money is a problem. If us who have money to, to lend over to someone to start a business, then the person is able to go. But nowadays, what do, what do they do? They say that, no, I started myself to what from zero, what from zero. Now I find myself here. Who I am what, to, to, to give you this money unless you have to pay me. How can, you, how can I pay you if I do not have any money which, while I'm struggling now? This is the reason. Because I've been seeing this at some certain uh, uh, three friends of mine that they have business now. Then so when I was talking about them, and guys, I really want also to start a business A, B, C, D. Then they said, no, we want to start. At least for me, I'm working. I can able to pay for what? What about the person who do not have anything? They said, no, I cannot give uh, in what uh, to help someone who just out of like that while me, I started was my business to, to reach where I am now. People, they don't like handing over. But people at the village, that's why we see that people, they don't suffer. The reason is that they help one another too much. That if it doesn't have food, they will be able to give or maybe come wait for just some certain things that they give. But in town, uh, it's too much self-centered. Okay, thank you, Brother John. Anyone else? Anyone else to comment, question? Oh, can I make my, my point clear? <laughs> Go ahead. So what I was referring to is, is those same towns that need the skills. Sorry. You see, most people in town, they, have this, they might have the skills, but they don't have maybe the knowledge how to apply the skills you know, in the industry. That's why I think that we as Christians, you know, we must, that's why the book was telling more, was speaking to us that are Christians, no? How, how do we help the poor and those who are homeless? Is by creating awareness, no? Where, can they, where they can develop their skills, you know? Especially those in town who came to settle, maybe to come and look for something. It's better maybe us as a church, I'll say them, okay, you're looking for employment, you're unemployed, what do you have? Let me tell, me, I tell you, no, I, I have a degree in this and I have this. Maybe I'm a welder, I'm a carpenter. Now you tell them, okay, how do we from there those who have skills in in, in, in developing proper cities you we make workshops no and bring them in that's why not, not everyone no one will give you capital in, in this world we are the economy is tough brothers will help even in church they'll give you a lot of story no no i have things to pay i have a b to pay i have what to pay the time when the story the brother tell, told you it's from the time you can't ask him even money anymore so it's better us maybe to come up with workshops how to build you know characters of us christians no, to enhance ourselves to have in our hands because if we depend from others, we'll never get that's this reality of life that we are facing in the city. I'm telling you, no one's willing to help another brother. Even as seven advantage that I have, we're not willing to help each other. We may say we have 
Someone might have, a, you might have money, 20,000 in your bank account. If I come to enter, brother, give me 2,000 to start a business. Most of us will refuse, you know? But I think it's us to come together, form small joint ventures as, as, as Christians, and give each other help. If you can't help physically, I think even by knowledge, by giving them workshops, I say, training them, you know? Having, a train, having something we can train people to enhance their skills, to find better employment much faster, instead of just sitting at home. So it's better us to create awareness for us Christians, to help each other out. It's very, it's very bad seeing a, a fellow Christian suffering that worships the Lord. Then you say, I worship a living God. That is an embarrassment to, to God. When, when he sees to others, says the others are prospering, you are sitting at, at home, someone is unemployed five years, and if, that's your fellow brother. And you just come to say, each, each Sabbath you greet him. Ah, happy Sabbath. Ah, everything is fine. Ah, God is good. God is good till when? Help the brother out with something. It's time we must act as Christian. I'm telling you. This is what you're saying to someone, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. You must stop. It's time to help others, give them skills if they can. If you have a company, employ them as significant if they can. That's my comment for now. Yeah, just last, oh, this is the last comment now for me. Um, it is through what you are saying, my brother, that uh, us who, are, who know this, uh, this truth, we should always um, help a hand to those people. And also, us who are knowing now the truth, that we should be prayerful so that God can bring the spirit also for people to help hands. For example, that uh, these things just happened recently now, now that uh, uh, you see how people now, how they are growing cold in the heart. There's a, a sister man who's going to be a city scan to, in Wintook, at Wintook Center there. She have a migraine for a long period of time. She asked for help. Um, you know, I'm a personal ministry leader um, in our church. So I asked, I, I, she, asked, she came through me to ask if she needed help from, the, from church members. So I posted this, what, this um, uh, request in a church that please let's help a hand, anyone who have anything so I can able to give to this certain person who able to, she can able to go to what? To, to Wintook because she was, she was directed to go there to Wintook to, to see a doctor because she doesn't work this girl. So no one commented, no one able to give a hand. But when, when, it, when it, someone, when the, what, when the, the conference said that the, every church we should buy a thermal gun, that this thermal gun that we should make contribution, uh, then people suggested that we should contribute $50. People, everyone was raising in a group. No, I'm having fifty dollar come and take. Fifty dollar come and take. We are oh, serious. When you when you look at those type of things, how can we able to grow? How can the people? When you do you think that those type of people can able to help you to do your business? If they are failing you to what to to help one what one of the friends want to go to be what go to to be um, to be to be treated at hospital, but you are rushing to buy a thermal gun. Uh uh. Today we are growing too much. It's just that, oh, okay, it's okay. All right, thank you, Brother John. Give, can you read your vest? Apparently, he can't read this verse. We may continue. All right. Uh, any other comments? Uh, one or two? If I close the lines. All right. It appears that uh, there's no comments, questions anymore. All right. Thank you so much uh, for the questions and comments. Uh, but, but this time, we're going to close with a song, and then we're going to give to the the presenter to pray uh, in closure. We're going to ask Brother Brother Sheriff to close in a song. All right. Thank you very much. There's not a friend like the lovely Jesus. No, not one, no, not one, not as good in all our souls descends. No, not one, no, not one. 
Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Did ever send find this friend forsaken? No, not one. No, not one. Oh, sin I find that you would not take him. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Thank you, Brother Musweu, if I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, Brother Sherry, thank, thank you. Brother Zedi, can you close in a prayer? We are praying to our loving Father in heaven. Lord, we come before the throne of mercy and we ask for only one thing. That teach us, Lord, love for each other and for all mankind and teach us to be like you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> uh, I think we, 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 we've come to the end of the presentation. Maybe you can stop the live. Um, <clears throat>